Let's get some of the drink. Hmm? Let's get some of the drink. Tart. Right, I can wait. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, what's your hand? Take Where you started? Real quick, I call, call it salute real quick and then uh, continue. Okay, con, so like it. Y no solo en este tiempo, pero es el tiempo pasado. 
¿Por qué no es la única vez que hemos estado en un cautiverio? O sea que viene también del Sí, eso solo aplica a esta gente. Solo los negros, solo los llamados negros y los latinos. Por eso es que estamos juntos, por eso es que vivimos en la misma área. Porque somos la misma, la misma gente, somos hermanos. ¿Verdad? Somos la misma historia. Por eso es que cuando, por ejemplo, miran a algunos latinos más oscuros que otros, pues somos la misma, somos la misma nación. Todos venimos de Abraham, Isaac y Jacob. ¿Y Adán cómo era? ¿Era negrito? Sí, Adán era negro. ¿Era negrito? Sí. Sí, sí Adán. Eh, eh, todos, descendemos de Adán todos. ¿Su lamita era negrita? Su lamita. ¿Era negrita? Sí, su lamita. Su lamita fue una muchacha muy temerosa de Dios. Sí. Y el rey Salomón se enam vivió enamorado de ella. There's a hospital not too far up here. She said they're committing genocide to, to us. And I was like, who's us? She said to the blacks and the Hispanics. Because at, at that hospital, they only help out the, the Edomites. She didn't say Edomites. She was talking about white people. But, you know, from what she knows, she was able to tell me what she was trying to what she was trying to convey. She was telling me that there's a certain hospital. I forgot the name of it. But she basically saying they don't help Hispanics and blacks. Oh. You know, specifically, they try to avoid help with them. And they'd rather help Esau. You know, and then she was telling me, Uh, if brothers know the, the history uh, about the Hundred Hour War in El Salvador and Honduras, it basically she was telling me how people think it started because of a, a soccer game. She was telling me no, it started because of an Edomite. You know, she was telling you know a lot of people don't know that people think it was over a soccer game or something like that, but it was really an Edomite that started that war and it had to do with money. Mm. You know, so the devil does what he does, man, to kill our people. Man. Yeah. These people died. There was casualties. Yeah. You know, but hey, our people are waking up. The most important thing that we're doing out here. Is, is, is bringing our people back to, to their nationality, man. Sure. All right, by the spirit and power, Yahweh by Shemiel Shai. All right, so we can get Ezekiel 37. Yeah, let's start at, let's start at, uh, actually, yeah, go, go to 15. Oh, 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 uh, Jeremiah 50. 50 and 30. 50, 30, 30, 30. 30. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's actually get that first. Jeremiah, all right, because you not only have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi waking up, man, you also got the northern kingdom. Oh, Absolutely. They're also going to stand up in great boldness according to the scriptures, man. When you read Wisdom of Solomon, the, the fifth chapter, man, the righteous man. The righteous man isn't only Judah, man. The right, of course, it was. It starts with the tents of Judah, uh, Zechariah, all right? Like it says in Zechariah, the Lord will save the tents of Judah first. Now you've got the whole house of Ephraim, man. That's the whole northern kingdom, all right? Hey, I myself being a believer. 
Jeremiah 50 and 33, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the children of Israel and yep. the children of Judah. Yeah, Israel and Judah. Israel represents the northern kingdom because we identified as the kingdom of Israel when we separated. All right, when you read the book of Kings. I no, that's what I'm looking at now. Second that's Kings, the uh, 17th chapter. Oh. All right, we have Rehoboam and Jeroboam. All right, and the prophet uh, Elijah, I believe, was his name. All right, uh, uh, the nation was rent. You know, he, he prophesied that, man. What, the nation split. Oh, yeah. All right, you had uh, Jeroboam, which was Puerto Rican. Rehoboam, the, the Judite. All right, as I say the Puerto Rican just to remember which one's which. But nonetheless, you had Jeroboam, which was the head of the, of the yeah. tribe of Ephraim, right? He was given those ten tribes, man. He was given... Uh, uh, like we say, he from on down because of the sign on here, man. All right? And what? Go ahead. It said, uh, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, right? Go ahead. Yes, it says, the children of Judah, so like the children of Israel and the children of Judah uh -huh. were oppressed together. Yeah, oppressed together. When was the last time, all right, uh, when was the last time that we were in a captivity together and oppressed together besides Egypt? Can anyone name it? Other than, you know what I mean? Egypt? It's this time, man, it, 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 here in America, okay? okay? Here in America is where Judah and Israel were oppressed together, or Ephraim. All right, sometimes it, it calls the whole northern kingdom uh, Ephraim in the scriptures, right? That's future prophecy. That's the thing. Jeremiah 50 and 51, all right, is not talking about back then. It's talking about these times here in America. Sure. All right, they were oppressed together. That's here right now, okay? That's why you see uh, in, in the, you know, the ghettos, right? You see who? Judah and Ephraim together, man. They're, they're, especially here on the East Coast, in segregation, like like out of the West, mm -hmm. you see Judah and Ephraim together, pressed together. Did you say something? Fine. Right. It says, and all that took them captive uh -huh. held them fast. Yep. They refused to let them go. Gosh. Yeah, that's right, man. Because we're still in captivity unto this day, man. All right. And for you fools that say we're not in captivity, yeah. you still pay taxes. Man. You still pay taxes, mm -hmm. and you still live in poverty. All right, you can't claim your real nationality if you do, you're labeled crazy. People look at us like we're crazy, out there. Mm -hmm. you know? Hey, and if only in America you can be anything you want to be, just and like you're a little Yeah. I'm not saying that because that's the man, that's oppression. Scriptures speak about surely oppression making the wise man mad. All right? And only a wise man is going to stand out here and teach this truth. Okay? Let's go back to this. Let's go to this. The most important thing happening right now is prophecy taking place, man. All right, yeah, World War III, Mark of Peace, and how should I come back on what prophecy? But our people waking up is a huge part as well, right? All right? Because our, our people waking up is what's going to solidify the elect being seen. All right? Because the Lord ain't going to destroy this place until the elect is seen. Pursuing the what? Revelations of 7 chapter. And that's why it's important when you see our people waking up, man. You don't know who's up to the elect. Okay. This is Ezekiel 37 and 15. It said, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Uh -huh. That's right. That's why we have this up here, man. All right. And hey, hey, you have right now a, a recent controversy. You got vocab melody talking smack about the sign now. He's saying that the sign has, how are you going to go from geographical locations to, to ethnicities? Well, clearly Bocat doesn't know what, what an ethnicity is, because if he said that, he, he, he wouldn't have mentioned that. Mm -hmm. You know, because truth is, when you look at this sign right here, it's all about prophecy. We didn't pull this out of a hat, all right, when, when uh, the elder high priest, Ariyah, or the spirit was put on him to, to bring out the sign, you can tell he didn't just pull something out of a hat, man. It was an actual breakdown that goes with every single name on this sign, man. And we can actually break it down for you fools out there, all right? It's great blasphemy to say that the sign is, is inaccurate. You're saying that the Lord is inaccurate. Because what is Ezekiel 37 talking about if it's not this? I want to know. You know? You're going to write, you're going to take it, they're going to take an actual staff and write Judah right under an ephraim. That ain't nothing. What about his companions? Mm -hmm. They said his companions. Idiots. That's the thing, man. These people, they're not fit to teach you. All right? We got a lot of sign haters out here. And the people who hate the sign are the most unspiritual Israelites ever. Because nine times out of ten, it's the Israelites, man. That's right. All right? Well, it says, then take another stick and write upon it for uh -huh. Joseph. Yep, Joseph, which represents the northern kingdom. You so-called Latinos and Native Americans. Because y'all Israelites, too. All right, and y'all don't y'all don't get a pass 
Because you see brothers up here with afros, you think this has not, got nothing to do with you? No. All right, you'd be a fool to just walk by and think this has nothing to do with you. Your name is up here. If your name is up here and you just pass by and don't care, you're being marked. All right, just so you know. All right, no one's innocent. Okay? Go ahead. It says, the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Verse 17, it says, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one. In thy hand. Yeah, that's right, because it spoke about Judah and then it spoke about Joseph, the house of Joseph and his companions. That's why you have Judah, Benjamin, Levi at the top, and then you have, and that's why we say Ephraim on down. <coughs> this was all spiritual right here. The contents to the sign is found in Genesis, the 49th chapter, which is what I was trying to tell the, uh, that, that lady up here in the second She was a, a little bit older, she was a little bit elderly. Mm -hmm. I was telling her, look, because she said, oh, I'm from the tribe of Zebulun. She said, do I find that in Deuteronomy 28? I said, no. Deuteronomy 28 gives you the curses that befell us, the blessings, then the curses. But the contents of where I told the word your tribe is, is in Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33. Okay? That's where the contents of the sign is going to be at, man. All right? Because this is according to prophecy. See, people think that we just connected the dots and it's just like, oh, well, it's this tribe because we said so. No. When you actually read the reason why vocab there's geographical locations because according to prophecy this is who is who this is where the bulk of those people would be or the bulk of where that tribe would be and that's specific because for some the explanation of it isn't just a nomen omen it's the geographical location that's right it's simple you know it's not hard to tell if you're spirit if you have a spiritual eye go ahead okay. this is first uh, corinthians 14 37 uh -huh. any man think himself to be a prophet uh -huh. or spiritual let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord you know if you think of yourself to be spiritual first off the scriptures say prove all things so if you're gonna tell us that our sign is inaccurate please book chapter verse how am I inaccurate how are we inaccurate how are our elders and apostles inaccurate I would love an explanation you see and also to you uh to, to folky all right or don't be destroying our people every day all right if all the tribes are so-called equals then who's cat who's root who's manessah i would love to know according to prophecy and and i need book chapter verse because i learned this breakdown book chapter verse all right go ahead yeah, but I remember you read it. Yeah. It's Corinthians 14 and 37. If any, it says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Yeah, and if, if I may say, I mean, it says, if any man think himself, think, thinketh himself also to be a prophet, which that in itself, you can't just skip over that. Yeah. So that means any man that's out here that actually claims or, or first and foremost that's actually coming into uh, with a name, all right, in the name then you for sure have to go into what? The commandments of the Lord. And actually, the word commandment, it can mean just that. The book of Proverbs can be looked down as the commandment of the Lord. It's just a, a book of, of, of sayings, all right? So when any man is out here, what, they actually, yeah, like the brother said, they have to prove exactly what they say. And that all actually reminds me, like, uh, we didn't bring it out, but in Deuteronomy, the uh, 28th chapter, we go through the apportionment to many of the curses, but one up the top that I was thinking of, when she, when she was talking about the, uh, what was it, the 100 hours war? The 100 hour war. The 100 hour war was, um, was uh, the curses of, of what? Of the men of Israel looking upon another, well, with an evil eye. Yeah, that brother. Mm -hmm. All right? Eye. That was a real thing. If I can go know, though, the whole, uh, you had, if I'm not mistaken, El Salvador legitimately declaring war on, on Honduras over, you know, a soccer game, which allegedly, allegedly you know, and people actually, you know, butchering each other yeah. over, over something uh, minuscule. Yeah, a Again, once more, First Corinthians 14 and 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things. It's lucky. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Yeah, now let's get a link up to this, all That's right? Because right. you hear a lot of rebuttals, but you hear no explanation. No one's out here telling us you're wrong, and then they bring out a scripture to prove how we're wrong. No one's doing that. And if they are, they're butchering the scriptures. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. Uh -huh. It says, To the law and to the testimony, yep. if they like, speak no. not according to this word, this word, the laws of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, which the law is not just uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. It's the whole book. When you go to the, the book of Baruch, it, it, it says that. The whole book is called the law.
law of Lord or the law of God. All right, well, they say it is because there is no light in them. Yeah, that's right. If they don't speak according to the scriptures, according because there's no such thing as there, there is no private interpretation. You can't give your interpretation of what the no. You have to you have to say what the scriptures is talking about. All right. If you don't speak according to the words of Yahweh Shai, you are a liar. All right, and the truth is not in you. Okay. If you aren't teaching our people who they are according to the Bible, you probably need to put the book down. All right, you shouldn't be teaching. All right, if you if you're in a Christian church, all right, if you claim to be a pastor, that means and you're not teaching who the Israelites are so according to the 100 percent truth, you're a liar. All right, you're wasting time. You're using the, the, the book for money. You're using the book for your malicious gain. Okay. Yes. This is Second Peter's one and twenty, knowing this first. There's no prophecy of the scripture. Yeah, no prophecy of the scripture. That's very important. All right? Because you lot of you got a lot of people falsifying out here. All right? And yes, if you break the tribes down wrong, you're 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 interpreting prophecy incorrectly. Because this is all according to prophecy. All right? It's not just history, it's prophecy. Right? It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. 21st verse. Yep. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. That's right, because it never came from the will of man. You know? That's why that's why someone who's not spiritual can't can't prophesy. They can't break down the scriptures to you. Hey shoes, hey shoes. That's why vocab alone can't break down the scriptures because he's not a spiritual man. You see? He's not a prophet of the Lord. I don't no one cares how Michael Brown, no one's thinking, you know, I gotta mention his ass, alright? I made a video about him because he made a whole article talking smack about our Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, guess what, man? I don't care how much of a scholar you think you are. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't teach the truth. You can learn the Bible back and forth. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't break it down. No, I'm talking about it. Who said it? Again, it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of the Mosai spake. As they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Holy men spake and were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's why the scriptures say all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. All right? When Jeremiah uh, uh, was given visions, he would speak the visions that he saw and Baruch scribed it down. That's how this That's how this came about. You know? For you fools out there, you got people that ask silly questions. Who wrote the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible, what does the word Bible mean? Collection of books. All right, the book of Jeremiah were words that Jeremiah spoke and his scribe wrote it down. The Lord gave the visions, all right? It has some history in there. Things were written which, which actually happened, all right? There was actual prophecies like Jeremiah did we just read. That was a prophecy. When he said Judah and Ephraim what, were oppressed together, that was something that didn't happen back then. That was Babylon. That was only the southern kingdom, right? So what was he taught? That means he saw something. He received a vision. That's why it says in Habakkuk, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that you may run that reading. What is that talking about? Because that word vision in, in, in that scripture is prophecy. It's talking about prophecy in the Hebrew. You know? And what? These prophecies are written down, and we're breaking them down correctly in these times, man. All right? Is that it? All right, let's go ahead and jump back to you. This is Micah chapter 3, verse 6. It says, Therefore, night shall be unto you. But ye shall not have visions to these false prophets. Yep. And it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. Mm -hmm. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, mm -hmm. and the day shall be dark over them. Mm -hmm. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confound them. Mm -hmm. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of the most high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And that's what the brother said to the false prophets, man. Because what? At some point, Hey, you can really say that demons were dealing with certain certain people that were, that were false prophets. You know, they were healing the sick. They looked like they were really men of the poor. Now we're coming to a point in time where these men are coming out here trying to confound us and they're getting confounded. Their vision is failing. Because what's their vision? Truth be told, when they say things like, nah, what you're saying is not true, America's gonna keep going. That's a false vision. That's a false hope that they believe in. And at one point, it seemed to be true. If you would have been preaching what we preaching about the economic collapse, taking trouble 15 years ago, we'd be y'all crazy. At one point, 30,000 dollars a year was a lot of money. Now, if you make that much, you're broke. Right? So back then, it didn't seem like, like what? I'm making, I'm making 100K a year, I'm almost a million. Right? 
But now, when we out here preaching and teaching the truth, people are like, yo, these guys are lying. You know, that everybody comes up here and agrees with something to say. You know, because they can see, hey, so there's no vision in hey, everything fails. You know, these people are giving, are giving a false hope out here. All right? Now it's failing. Because at one point it seemed like what they said was correct, but now you see what the Bible truly is saying is what's, is what's standing. And it always was. It always was. All right? Now let's move to the scripture. You got something? Yeah. Go ahead. It's in Luke 21 and 8. Yep. So he says, take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed. Now, real quick, let's touch on this. Let's, let's go more than just surface level. Yes, you have people out here actually claiming to be uh, Yahweh Shah. You have people out here, some some call themselves Yeshua and all that other garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Some people out here saying they're Jesus. There was a Serbian who was saying he was Jesus. But let, let's, let's dig a little deeper. First off, what did that say? It says Christ, right? Well, uh, yeah. Christ just means anointed. There's going to be many false anointings coming in the name of the Lord. Sakar is a perfect example, you know? And we're not just naming names just to name them. Truth is, they're out here claiming to be men that are anointed. When truth be told, they're teaching carnality and falsehood to our people. Yeah, you teach things that are honorable, like who the Israelites are according to, according to the scriptures. But hey, man, when you say we're not supposed to worship Yahweh Shai the way we do, that's mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. You're going off now. All right, and we're gonna put you on blast for it because you teach you teaching falsehoods, man. Mark them, mark them, which cause division, man. You gotta watch them, man. You gotta keep an eye out for these phonies, man. Many false anointings out here, man. Who else is a false anointing? These these fucking uh, 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 gurus on on YouTube teaching about crypto. Oh, it's just crypto right now. Everything, the dollar's about to crash. Crypto ain't gonna save you, man. All right, but there ain't nothing financial gonna save you. Even David said, I will not trust in my boat because you got people out here teaching, teaching how, to, how to bug out correctly. You know, you got the bug out bags. You know, Dion, don't get two, two, three, get five, five, six. You know, get the seven, six, two. That's, that's the war ammunition. <laughs> that ain't gonna help you either, man. You know, because that's, that's that. He's all teaches that big. They're like, oh, you can't use five, five, six and get it, so you gotta use seven, six, two. You gotta use even in the black box, man. It goes through everything. And it's like, all right, but that's still not gonna work. You know? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Remember, remember to read it. Luke 21 and 8. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, uh -huh. and the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. Right? And if you read down to verse 28, I'm going to read this also. It says, And when these things begin to come to pass, mm -hmm. then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. Yep. Alright, so, you know, just uh, hopping on to that point, as I can have also stated before, if you read up uh, in the Classical verses, always, like, 10 to 15 verses. No. This is all proper. Alright, so I like, like we read in verse 8, many men are going to come up and say they are indeed the anointed. Now, some of them is going to be quite funny. Like, oh, look, how could this man possibly be the anointed? bug it. Some men out there are going to go as far as to change uh, 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 the agenda of the scripture. They're actually going to go as far as to go into every nook and cranny and try to have a discussion with you as to how foolishly they are. The, the, the son of man. All right, we've seen it happen time and time again. We've seen it happen, uh, you know, just the past few weeks. All right, and this is all what prophecy. So ultimately, it's reassuring to know that this is all supposed to happen. Yeah. All right. It's right. isn't a like it's isn't a strange thing. No, no, no you you put it in. Uh, it's a sign of the times. When false anointings come out, you have false salvation telling you it's a sign of the times. It's a good thing. All right. Hey, false prophets, as much as I hate them and I hate listening to their bullshit, hey man, it's a sure sign of Yahweh Shai is coming. Which when you read down in Luke 21 and Matthew 24, right? It, it, it speaks about wars, rumors of wars and things like that, man. Those are the things that we're banking on. Those are the, the, the signs, all right? Because the signs are speaking now louder more than ever. Because it's not just a few things that's happening. It, it's almost all of them, you know? It's like, yo, the, the, the RFID, man. Come on, credit to See him. It is here. It's actually talked about opening. People are getting this to, to open their cars, to open their homes. All right? As wallets. You know, you got the hardware wallets being uh, promoted now. They look like big-ass chips. You know? Hey, man, uh, everything electric is being promoted. 
that can only lead to one thing, man. So it's the credit scores, uh, which is, you know, they keep track of, of how you move. You got the AI BS. Oh, man, so much, man. Hey, the, the, the image of the beast is being shown in front of you in, in everyday life. All right? This is Revelation 1 and 7, uh -huh. and this goes to show you uh, the cool beast false anointings that's showing up everywhere that I will say is not coming back in the manner that they show up. This is Revelation 1 and 7 it says, Behold, yeah. he cometh with clouds, yeah. and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so are men. Okay, that just goes to show you he's not coming back to meet you as a man. He's not going to be walking up and down Columbia Heights, 14th Street, Georgia Avenue, Howard University, standing in front of you with some crazy African colors on, trying to tell you who he is. No, he's coming back in an angelic body with a vicious military force with nothing on this planet that can stop him, okay? And we're waiting for that day. It's like the brother was going into so beautifully that there'd be wars and rumors of war. And we're waiting for those things to happen. So when he crashes in the clouds, we're going to be like, there's our Lord and Savior right there. That's right. That's, That's right. the one who's coming back. Yep. We know how he's coming back. Matter of fact, the water you said that, but that's the spirit. Let's talk about, let's talk about, let, let, let's read the scriptures that encompass the second coming of our Lord. Because it damn sure ain't going to be a nigga on the streets wearing the Ethiopian colors. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're referring to a specific individual that called himself the son of man. But no, bro. No. According to that, according to the scriptures, yeah, when Yahweh Shai comes back, all right, you idiots ought to be ashamed of yourself saying things that you, Yahweh Shai, and saying that you're this, you're that. Nah, man, y'all ain't shit, man. All right, because according to the scriptures, Yahweh Shai is going to come back as, as a power, an angelic force with chariots. It's going to be a grand entrance. You know, that fool ain't killing nobody. You know, it says it says even those which pierced him, he ain't getting revenge on, on nobody. You know, go ahead, start that talk. Because because according to the scriptures, all right, Yahweh Shai's grand entrance is simultaneous to the destruction of this place. It goes hand in hand. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why it says he's coming with clouds, man. That ain't literal just white clouds, man. It's talking yeah. about chariots, man. That's right. With coming with, with with the flames, man. With fire and vengeance. Go ahead. Yeah, 47 and 1. Yeah. This is Isaiah 47 and 1. Uh -huh. Come down and sit in the dust. Uh -huh. O virgin daughter of Babylon, which is talking about America. O virgin daughter of Babylon. Why is this place the virgin daughter of Babylon? Because it's never been touched. That's why it's considered the virgin. All right. And what does what does Babylon mean? The land of confusion. That's why this place is the virgin daughter of Babylon, an untouched land of confusion. And sit down in the dust. That dust represents confusion. And it represents that low state. Sit in the dust. All right. Because unlike these times, you know, sitting in the dirt now is normal. But back in ancient times, he wasn't sitting in the dust. That was a sign of, of poverty and humility. That's what that, that's it's symbolic of humility. What? What for the correct vocabulary? It says, come down and sit in the dust, uh -huh. O virgin daughter of Babylon. Yep. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. Yeah, there is no throne. You're not going to sit on your throne anymore, Esau. All right? More specifically, you uh, American Edomites, man. Yeah. You're not going to sit on a throne no more. Because right now, they're... They, they, well, they think themselves, they're falling slowly, but surely, but what? There's no more big timing, as we say, all right? Ain't no more throne for, for this so-called white man, man, all right? Hey, man, man, Israelites always just walk by and just don't don't give a shit. It's irksome, man, you know? You know your enemy and you don't say nothing, man. That's some fools, man. Go ahead. It says, O daughter of Chaldean, uh -huh. for, <clears throat> it says, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Yeah, that's right. Because at one point, this place was compared, it was like tender and delicate, like a tender and delicate woman. People came over here, got rich, all right? Back in the day, minimum wage was more than enough. Back in the day, you know, people weren't, look, people did look at your credit score, but it was a different world back then, man. You know, everything was cheaper. You know, this place was comfortable, you know? Crime rate is ridiculous now. Crime rate is touching up the suburbs now, man. This place is not going to be tender and delicate when you have a shot comes back. This place is going to be... It's gonna, it's gonna be like a third world country. This place already is like a third world country. 
There's shootings everywhere. Like, like in people talk shit about Mexico, right? Oh, the cartel running. That's like, bro, that shit looks just like over here. You just got better looking homes and shit. And there's shootings every day. People killing each other every day. You know, this place ain't no better than than, than Central America. You know, the water might be a little bit cleaner, but other than that, America is a shithole. All right, go ahead. It says, uh, take the millstones and uh -huh. grind mill, and mm -hmm. cover thy locks, yep. make bare the lake. Yeah, that's right, and that that's uh, uh, America, that's that covering cast being lifted, you can say, all right? Because what? Uh, all the secrets, all that shame that America had is being shown, all right, you know? Everybody knows America for slavery. Everybody knows America for trying to kick out immigrants, you know? Everyone knows America, especially American Edomites. It's a different breed of Edomites. You know, Edomites in Germany are different from the American Edomites here. You know, the toothless Edomites, you know, Mountain Dew drinking, real blue cast Edomites. They're really the kind of relevant. It's really the, the upper echelon of Edomites here in DC, man. You know, the ones that worship Satan and do seances and drink blood. Those are the Edomites. They're, they're, they're being revealed. Our elder apostles years ago made videos on their secret societies, the, the, the skull and crossbones, and these different. How these different uh, sororities and fraternities, they recruit people to be Freemasons, you know? And, and Freemasons are, 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 are Satan worshippers disguised as Christians, you see? That's the best way you can describe them, a bunch of Satan worshippers that disguise themselves as Christians. But ain't nothing but a bunch of devils, man, all right? There's a reason why high-level members of society are also Freemasons. It's no coincidence. You see, all those things are being revealed. The Lord said he would do it, uh, Jeremiah 49 10, really, really quickly, okay? Because what, man? The, the Lord is exposing the, all the falsehoods, all right? And it all ties in, man, because we started off talking about the tribes and the sign. It ties in, too, because us knowing who we are shows us who Esau is. Once you know who Esau is, you know who the Israelites are. You can, you can learn it in reverse order, and it's still going to come up the same. There's only one person oppressing us. There's only one person being oppressed, you know? Can't, there's no hiding from that. This is Jeremiah 49 and 10. It says, but I've made Esau bare. Yep, that's right. That's what that's what that's talking about in Isaiah 47. Esau being made bare. Uncovered the leg. Yeah, that was a literal vision, all right, that the prophet Isaiah saw. Then we're breaking down what it's talking about. You see? Yep. It says, I have uncovered his secret places. Yeah, his secret places, his secret council. You know, a, 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 a Zebulun lady, Zebulonite lady that was a street vendor knew Esau was committing genocide. Mm -hmm. That's him being made fair. She probably don't even really know how to use YouTube and Google like that, but she knows the atrocities that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has committed. You see? It says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. That's right. He won't be able to hide himself either, his true nationality. You know? You got many biblical scholars out here saying, well, when Esau came out, he was uh, red like a hairy garment. Hairy. They, they emphasize on that hairy garment. And it's like, nah, nigga, I saw red. You ain't lying to me. All right, boy? I like to talk to him. Or in my head. <laughs> Gotta be wise out here. But nonetheless, you know, Esau is being made. Man, he can't hide. There's no more hiding, man. All right? He's super out there, you know? Just the average, the average Negro, Latino, Native American knows who Esau is now. Most, most of them do, most people know. They, they might not be in the truth, but they still know not. Nah, that's the devil about this book. That's the deceiver right there. You know? Let's get back to this document. Isaiah 47, continue. Yeah, let's uh, touch on that real quick. Hey, can we expose that? He's on the last time. Right now, right? We're going to sound like a broken record to all those people. That's right. All right? I don't care if you, don't care if you like it or not, man. Right? Verse. <laughs> My nakedness shall be... Uncovered, yep. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Uh huh. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. That's what the brother here quoted earlier. He said, "I will take vengeance." Read it again. Read it. Read it loud, man. This is this is the grand entrance that our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is not coming back with peace. Contrary to what, what the church might teach, you, he's definitely not coming back to give everybody a hug. All right. <laughs> definitely not. What? It says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yep. yea, thy shame shall be seen. Uh -huh. I will take vengeance, 
and I will not meet thee as a man. Is vengeance something nice? No, man. Vengeance, man. It's a it's a righteous thing to recompense tribulation unto those that trouble thee, the scripture says. In 2 Thessalonians, New Testament, for that ass, man. All right? It says, I will not meet thee as a man, because Yahweh Shai is coming back as, as a God. Habakkuk, when he saw the second coming of Yahweh Shai, he said, God, power came from Teman. Meaning coming for Teman. Teman is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, I believe it's a tribe of Esau. Is it a city or is it a tribe? I think it's a tribe, right? It's a locky, yeah, a tribe of Esau. I get it confused with the city. All right? It said, it said God, let, let's get it. Habakkuk 3. Real quick, real quick. Because this is more, this is just, see, different prophets received similar visions, right? And they all pretty much saw the same things, just some saw different details. Isaiah, he saw the second coming, he wrote about it more than once. All right? Jeremiah saw it, he, he wrote about it more than once. Habakkuk 3 and 1, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shinoch. It says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Verse 3, it says, the Most High came from Teman. Come. It says, power came from Teman. Uh -huh. and, and this uh, is talking about uh, uh, the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Can you read it? Come, it says, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, uh -huh. Selah, his glory covered the heavens, yep. and the earth was full of his praise. Yeah, that's right, man. His glory covered the heavens. What is that, man? The, the chariots, they're going to cover the heavens. Right. When you read Second Ezra, the, the, the 13th chapter, it speaks about that man that came out of the sea, right? right? On that great mountain. Okay? That's, let's talk about the same thing. Ezra saw it. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, they all saw it. Zechariah. Alright? The, the curse of the Lord that the Lord for the house of the house of the thief. They all saw that, man. They saw that that the second coming. Verse 4 it says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. Horns are representative of power. That's what uh Ezra saw. He saw the, the flames, the flames coming out of his mouth and left nothing but ashes and the smell of smoke. Same thing that this is talking about. Come, this is uh, Habakkuk 3 and 4. It says, and his brightness was as the light. Uh -huh. He had horns coming out of his hand uh -huh. and there was the hiding of his power. Yep, that's right, man. That's how glorious the second coming of the Lord is going to be, man. He's going to burn people up, man. Uh -huh. All right, with the, with the concentrated fire from the chariots, and it sounds far fetched to you people, but if you're if you're spiritual, you can see it. Okay, go ahead and jump back, Isaiah. Yeah, this is um, Isaiah 47 and 4. Uh huh. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of Hosts is His name. Uh huh. The yeah, Holy... yeah, yeah, that's right, our Redeemer. Because who who's gonna redeem the nation of Israel? By Himself. Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. Simple. I said the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get no. thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, uh -huh. for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Uh -huh. It says, I was wrong. Jump ahead a little bit. Salah. Jump to. Uh, oh, you got something? Yeah, yeah. Read it, read it, read it. So this is um, just to add on. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Yeah, if I may add, that's a lot of that's a lot of damage that has been done really to the whole world. All right, and I was thinking about it. Even the whole classification of you know, skin color, where you may be, where your parents may, may be from, that's all gotten people uh, hella confused. Yeah. And then that, that comes in play with even the derogatory terms of our people. You know. And I also want to point out, point out as well, kind of off topic, kind of not. We have a lot of uh, so-called Jewish people that live in those uh, Germanic. Uh, regions, if I pronounce that right, a lot of German so-called Jewish people that call themselves uh, Ashkenazi Jews or Ashkenazi Jews. Now, wait a minute. If you claim to be a Jewish man, you, you obviously must know that you come from Shem. You know, any average Jew that may be learned or not. But here's the thing, you're calling yourself an Ashkenaz, mm -hmm. not realizing that Ashkenaz goes back to the line of Japheth. And they don't even go back to, uh, to Shem. 
They, they were totally different people. Mm -hmm. So why are you calling yourself? You got to remember, this is where the term anti-Semitic comes from. You're being anti-Shem, which is a bloodline. So how are you? Call, why? Why? Why then are you even calling yourself a, a, a descendant of Ashkenaz? That's mm -hmm. a man that came from the line of Japheth. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You see, you know? you see, so this is part of that covering cast of overall people. Even even yourself, they yeah. they dug the, their own grave, and even then they're they're, they're gladly in it. Yeah, that's you know, right. To keep the to keep the confusion. Mm -hmm. That's right, and, and I'm glad you said that, man, because they they even covered themselves, and it's a, it became a snare to them. You know, because it. Yeah, man, you should have just went all out and called yourself Israel, man. Nah, you call yourself Jewish, as if that's. Yeah, where is that? Come on, man. That sounds foolish, man. Yeah, we haven't touched on that topic in a while, too, man. We haven't slandered their ass in court. But hey, we don't really need to all the time, man, because what well, we know who we are, man. All right, we know who. Hey, because it's all about, like the brother said, bloodline, man. We know that we are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, we always mention that every single time. Man. And they they don't do that. You know, they don't talk about Abraham or Isaac. They don't even talk about Jacob. They're just Israeli. That's it. Come on, man. You gotta come with something better than that. Man. All right. Uh, uh, let's get second address there too. All right, because we're gonna keep talking about uh, uh, the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, we're, we're we're digging into the details about it. Right. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 1. Yep, yep. And it came to pass after seven oh, right. And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. Uh-huh. And this is a, a vision that Ezra saw, the prophet Ezra, right? And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, and it moved all the waves thereof. Uh -huh. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Yep, with the thousands of heaven. What's that talking about? The angels, man. All right? That's why in Revelation, we read it, brother read it in Revelation, the first chapter, in verse 7, man. 1 and 7. You know? He, he comes from the clouds, man. All right? When Yahweh Shai comes back, he's making a grand appearance. Mm -hmm. All right? And guess what, man? Uh, like, like you said in the, the book of Acts, the first chapter, the same way he left is how he's coming back. He left on a chariot, he's coming back on a chariot. That's right. That's pursuant to the scriptures. That's how we know you bozos that's claiming to be the Lord. Y'all some damn fools and y'all don't read. Y'all might have a little following and get your money up doing that, but guess what? You ain't gonna trick a spiritual man. All right? Well, according to the scriptures, the same way he left is how he's coming back. That's right. All right? You can't trick, hey, you can't trick the elect, man. Go willingly be a part of that number. All right? And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that yep. heard his voice. Yeah, that's right. That's talking about that concentrated fire that we read in Habakkuk uh, uh, 3. All right? But the horns that came out of his hand, that's what that's talking about, man. You know? Those are all things that the prophets saw. They all saw the same thing. You know? <laughs> they just said it a little bit different. But they all saw the same vision. You know? Notice, they always say, a vision came to me by night. And then they speak about what they saw. They saw the same exact things. What? All they burnt that heard his voice, mm -hmm. like as the earth faileth when it faileth the fire. Yep. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. Yep. From the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. To subdue the man that came out of the sea. Now, real quick, for you fools out there, because you got fools that's actually breaking this down very wrong. When it talks about the sea, it's still talking about the sky. You gotta know a little Hebrew now. Go on to the, 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 uh, the word for the heavens, it's the Hebrew word Shemayim, which means pertaining to water. Now, when you're translating Hebrew to English, you would have to somehow, some way, the word water would have to come up. You know? Because the, the heavens just means pertaining to water. That's all Shemayim means in Hebrew. That's why it says the man that came out of the sea. It's talking about he's coming out the sky. He's not coming out the Pacific Ocean, you fools out there. All right? He's coming out the skies, heaven. Okay? What? Verse 6. And they, oh, for lock here, they said to subdue the man that came out the sea. That's the different troops, man. All right, the, 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 the scriptures speak about the valley of Jehoshaphat, the, hey, the Yahweh's judgment upon the nations, man. All right, because it's a vain thing these people are thinking, thinking that China's next. Everybody's, that's the big thing on TikTok. Oh, China's going to rule. No, that's not in the scriptures. <laughs> it don't say, and then Moab. <laughs> took the Israelites after Esau. Yeah, like after Esau. No, man, that's not written. According to the Bible, after Esau comes Jacob to rule. 
And that's why I said in 2nd Ezra 6, what? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed it. That's right. Because Esau didn't rule, uh, 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 Salakia. Jacob hasn't ruled yet. All right? After, once Esau came into power, that's it. All right, we next, right after that. Okay? No, verse 6. It says, But I beheld, and lo, he had grieved, he had grieved himself a great mountain. Yeah, that great mountain is, the, is also is talking about a chariot. All right? Because in, in, in all reality, uh, I mentioned this too in a video I made uh, not too long ago. <clears throat> when you look at, <clears throat> and, and when you travel in, in VA, right? Let's say you're going out west, you see the mountains. When you really take a look at a mountain, the top of the mountain, and there's other mountains around it, it can look like a cherry. It can really look like a big circle, and you can't, you can't really tell where you can say that. Well, it's about uh, uh, but I would have seen the region or place where without the hill was graven, and I could not. Yeah, so you, like, basically, it's like looking at a mountain, right? And when you look at a mountain from far away, let's say you're driving up, and there's a, there's a bunch of other trees and forests, right? When you look at a really big mountain, you can't really tell where the mountain begins or where it ends. You can only see the top of it, the big mound. That's how big the chariot was, you know? If you ever look up in the city and you see towers, and you look up, and you see a big cloud, like those cumulonimbus clouds, those big storm clouds. You can't tell how big that cloud is. All you see is one point of it, because the towers are covering the rest of it. That's how big that chariot's gonna be. You can't tell where it's gonna end. All you're gonna see is the front of it. You know? That hill, that that that, that great that mountain. You know? It was Ezra likened it unto a mountain. You know? Like when you're driving on, on a long road and you see a mountain in front of you, it looks like it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how the chariot of Yahweh Shai is going to be. All right? That grand appearance. All right? Verse 8. It says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him uh -huh. were sore afraid. Yeah, sore afraid, man, because these, these nations are going to be afraid to fight our war. What did Revelation uh, 1 and 7 say? It said it what? Uh, read it again, brother. Revelation 1 and 7. You know? Let's get it again, man. I love talking about the returning of our Lord. All right, because right after that is peace forever. You know, that's our ticket out to hey, all the pain and suffering that, that, that you're going through. Once once this prophecy happens, all that's gone. All of it. All right. All the poverty. All the daily stress. All right. Daily oppression. Hey, we're oppressed, man. I don't I don't care who you are. We're talking about the Israelites. We're all oppressed out here. We all gotta wake up tomorrow and go to work, goddamn. You know? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> this Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, uh -huh. and every eye shall see him. Yep, yep. And they also which pierced him. And all kings of the earth shall well because of him. Yep. Even so, all men. That's right. That's what that's talking about. The second Ezra 13 chapter. Alright? They were afraid. You see? They would be afraid to fight. But what does it say? Keep going. Uh, I'll read verse 8 again. It says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet there's fight. Yep, they still fought. Right? Right? Verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held his sword nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out the That's why the scripture is so important, because it actually tells it to you straight. Because sometimes people get tripped up. Oh, but it's just words in Africa. What are you talking about, nigga? You know, you got Israelites out here that talk about it. Say, oh, what are you talking about? It doesn't say, it doesn't say that a laser beam came out of a, of a UFO. It doesn't say that. Well, right there, it just said a blast of fire. Simple. It's simple. You know? But some people just don't get it. People just don't want to get it. <laughs> you know? Is that more? Oh. Verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lift up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. Mm -hmm. All right, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. Uh -huh. The sparks and tempest, same thing that's written in Habakkuk 3. All 
right with the horns that came out of his hand. It's talking about the chariots there. Verse 11. And they were all mixed together the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them every one, so that, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. Yep, so that means that Ezra literally saw all those troops that, that, are, that are here now. That's what people don't realize. The people that are getting ready to go to war now, mm. they, their death was written about in the scriptures. You got to think about that, man. You know, you really got to think about that. The Lord detailed it. He said, Ezra saw an innumerable multitude. When you, I've been watching a lot of combat footage myself at home on my free time, you know, just to get into that mindset of, yo, this is going to happen. All those people that are there, it's, see, uh, the American army, you know, it looks huge. All these different thousands of people ready to fight. We all see the, the combat movies. You see all the troops getting together to fight. Can you imagine from all these different nations that are, that are, that are going to fight in, in World War III? And the Lord's just going to burn them. Innumerable multitude, Ezra said. You got to think about it. You know? I think about it like this. A thousand people, right? A thousand soldiers looks like a lot. An innumerable multitude that can cover a, a land mass, mm -hmm. and Yahushua is just going to burn them up without even lifting a finger? Mm -hmm. You got to think about that. That's why the scriptures say that he will not meet thee as a man. All right? All those Edomites, those Moabites, those Russians, all of them, it's going to burn them. Right? Yeah. Um, go uh, with uh, Brother Naaman speaking on it. says, this is Revelation 11 and 14. It says, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. Verse 15, it says, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Lord, and we shall reign forever and ever. Perfect. All right, because right after the destruction that Yahweh Shai is going to bring to those troops, he's going to rule, man. Jesus Christ right. is Lord. All right, no one cares, all right? How's a, how's a, how, is, how is an amphibious Negro going to talk to the real lions of Israel like that? How dare you say something like that? The Lord will cut your head off. Hey, he ain't going to make it down for Hey, man, it doesn't matter what people got to say out here. Man. Hey, in a roundabout way, when you think about Yahweh Shai, he's right. Yahweh Shai is Lord, all right? That's why his vengeance is going to be so great. And the brother just read, all right, about, about these nations, all right? And they're going to be ruled by Yahweh Shai, man. All right, let's get that in Psalms 2. This is Psalms, right? this is Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage yeah. and the people imagine a vain thing? Yeah, why do the heathen rage? That heathen was raging right now. Nah, that's talking about these other nations, man. They're raging. You know, people really think, oh, China got next. Russia got next. All the all the all the nations of BRICS nation, they got next. You know? All, all these other nations, you know, whoever's whoever's gonna be the next superpower. And it's like, bro, that's a vain thing, man. They're imagining a vain thing. To think that the uh, the, 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 the Moabites, so-called Chinese, are gonna be ruling next, are gonna be the next global superpower, or Russia, that, that's a vain thing for them to imagine. Cause that's not in the Bible. I know damn sure that's not in the Bible, man. You fools, man. That's not in the scriptures. Go ahead. It says the kings of the earth set themselves and the ruler, rulers take counsel together uh -huh. and against the Lord and against his anointed. Yeah, that's right, man. Everybody's taking counsel. Hey, because at the end of the day, man, the, the, the nations that know who we are, of course they're plotting to, to then take us too. You know, at some point. Not us in their lands building up their technology, building up their nation. You know, everybody ups this, the, the so-called Mexicans and Isaacs are being hard working. You don't think these nations want to take this part over there? precious metal, this precious stone or whatever. That's a vain thing, man. All right? According to the scriptures, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to be. And all of your wealth is going to go to us, man. 
All right, all that gold Ishmael has been hoarding up. Hey, the water for keeping it warm for us, man, but that's ours for the take. All the frankincense, all the oud. I can't wait to take y'all oud, man. Good. Straight <laughs> up, man, because y'all niggas be hiding that shit and then selling us the worst kind, man. I'm serious, brothers. I'm mm -hmm. dead serious. Mm -hmm. We're going to take all that, man. All the precious gold, all the rubies, all the precious stones, everything that you've been that you've been holding, all the riches, we're gonna take it the, the forces of the Gentiles, the scriptures say. That's what we're gonna take back, man. That's what we really want. That's I don't right. care, I don't want no million dollars, man. Alright? Give, give me give me flocks, give me land. And that ooh, and I'm gonna keep saying that too, and, man. And, and, if I may add not to cut you off, oh, bro, ahead, we brother. definitely want a million dollars, especially with like dead white people in space. Yeah, right. I don't want that present, man. Y'all can keep that shit. Man. Everybody at the plantation talking about, oh, you gotta get land and get rich. Yo, man, this place, according to the scriptures, is gonna be destroyed, man. So we now, hey, according to the scriptures, a hundred thousand thousand missiles, man. Two hundred. Huh? Two hundred thousand. Oh, it's not two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand thousand. Two hundred thousand thousand. Overkill for that ass, man. I ain't worried about nothing over here, man. All right, hey, everything you saw two from us over here, keep it, keep it. Go ahead. Let's skip down. Uh, eighth verse. Yeah. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. That's right. He will give us the heathen for thine inheritance. Well, let's talk about Yahweh Shai, but what? We're joint heirs, man. We're soon in Romans eight. Go ahead. In the uttermost parts of the earth, for thy possession. Mm. Uh, ninth verse. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. That's right. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a powder's vessel. Yep. Be, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, mm. be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Yeah, the ye judges of the earth. That's how you know. That's how you know we're joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, we'd be of that number, man. Because at first it's talking about Yahweh Shai, then it says, you know, to be, be wise, ye kings of the earth. You know? That's why the scriptures say that, 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 that we will judge angels. You know, meaning we're going to rule. All right? Actual, real rulership, too. Not, not this phony, baloney garbage over here, man. You know, our business would be righteous. You know, our rulership, our kingdoms would be righteous. Righteous law in the land. Okay, everything's gonna be turned right side up, man. You know, let's get real quick. Right. Let's get real quick. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is Proverbs 29 and one. It says. He that being often reproved. Oh, it's like this. Come. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. That's right, man. When the righteous are in authority is when, when the people are going to rejoice, man. Who are the righteous according to the scriptures? Only one nation of people can actually be righteous, which is the nation of Israel. All right? And right now, that's how you know the wicked is bearing rule because right now everybody's mourning. The earth, the animals, the people, you know. Uh, hey, man, you see it right now in society, man. Everybody's mourning, you know. You got derelicts walking around, talking smack, you know. You got men of our nation being, being uh, shoot, man, I don't want to say the word, being uh, homosexuals and, and, and living alternative lifestyles. The women of our nation being more. Those are all cries for help, man, you know. Hey man, then what? When the righteous are in authority, man, the people are gonna rejoice, man. When Yahweh Shai makes his grand entrance, entrance and, and destroys these kings, then that's what he's gonna do, man. You know, in ancient times, when a man took over a kingdom, he killed the king and he put his crown on his head. You know, that was symbolic of him saying, I'm the king now. And that's what Yahweh Shai is gonna do when he comes back by destroying physically the, 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 the so called kings of the world. That's right. All right? Because what? He's gonna destroy them. All right, he's gonna destroy them and take over. All right, he's gonna rule people. Hey, that's why the scriptures say every knee shall bow. All right, that's, hey, that's literal, man. People are really gonna bow to our Lord, man. That's We're right. gonna bow to our Lord. That's right. You see? Back in Psalms two, last two verses. Yeah, it, it says, "Serve the Lord with fear." So serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Yeah, that's a perfect exhortation for us, man. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Right? Twelfth verse. Yep. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Yep, that's right, man. Kiss the son, reverence the son, man. Lest he be angry with you. You know, be the opposite of these niggas out here, man. 
throwing bottles, acting a fool. Be the opposite of them. All right. So instead, we're gonna figure out how about Shmuel Shai, man. That's why we are. That's why we came out here today to preach and teach, man. That's right. All right. So we are gonna close out by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh. Shem Yahweh Shai. Bar Shem Kapodash. All right. Double honors to our elders and apostles, the great millstone, which are the men that did well and who taught us his truth. Peace, blessings, and salutations is always being to the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right. Hey, man. We almost out of here, man. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.